Good afternoon, everybody. 各位下午好。Yeah. Thank you for having me as your speaker. I wish to thank、uh, Mr. Mock for inviting me for this, and the、uh, Asia Pacific Gemological Society for having me along today for the talk. 感谢莫先生和亚洲宝石学院及鉴定所邀请我来到出席而做这个主讲嘉宾。Just one small correction before we start. I'm the ex-president of the Gemological Association. Ah, 另外呢，我要呃说清楚，就是我是前任的这个呃澳洲的宝石学会的主席，前任的主席。Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as as we said, I'm a uh, uh, antique expert. I've been in a fifth generation family of jewelers. Thank you very much. Uh, uh 我呢刚才也说了，我是呃。Uh, 呃，古董珠宝方面的一个专家，我已我已经是第五代了，从事这些的珠宝呃的工作。Yeah, and、uh, I've been involved with antique jewelry now for 38 years. 我做古董珠宝已经做了三十八年。And what I would like to speak on is more the European uh involvement of jewelry in Australia. 我会谈的就是呃，欧洲在珠宝方面的一些的演变和在澳洲的情况。Uh, even though that the indigenous or the Aboriginal、uh, community used jewelry going way, way back, even older than the pearls that、uh, Jack Ogden was talking about. 其实呢，如果你谈到那个原住民那那些土著，他们在珠宝方面的历史呢，其实呢，就是比珍珠的历史呢更长了。<laughs> okay, got. Okay, in nine in as nineteen in seventeen seventy seven, Captain Cook from England、uh, planted a flag in Australia, and it became a British colony. 那么在一七七七年呢，英国的 Captain Cook 就来到澳洲，树立了国旗，就成为了澳洲，当时就成为了英国的殖民地。And it was decided in England that Australia would be a good place where to send convicts or prisoners. 当时呢，就决定了澳洲是一个很好的地方，他们可以呃把一些被监禁的人送到那里。Yeah. So in 1778, the government sent Arthur Phillip to be the first governor of the colony of New South Wales. 在一七七八年呢，这个 Arthur Phillips。就成为新南威尔斯殖民地的第一位第一第一位的总督。So three ships arrived, full of convicts, with no food, no little water, no women, and no metal. 当时呢，就有三三只船把这些被监禁的人、定罪的人就送到那里。呃，上面呢没有食物，很少的水，没有女人，也没有金属。Hmm. So as you can see, there was no real need for jewelry. 当时也没有珍珠珠宝，呃，珠珠宝方面的真正需要。Right. So even as I said, the metal was very short, and there was no currency. And as the economy struggled to exist, it was decided that they would bring take some old Spanish coins called pieces of eight, and they would punch out the center. 呃，当时呢，正如刚才说，那个呃，金属是非常短缺的，而且呢，当时的经济呢也在一个挣扎的阶段。那么当时呢，就有呃，这八块的那个西班牙的这个图中所看到的呃硬币。And that was known as the holy dollar。称为 holy dollar。And dump。和 dump。The little piece that is called the dump。就是最小块的那些就是 dump。So the first real use of Metal in Australia was this type of currency from abroad. So, in the then, in the early use of metal was this kind of currency. So that's the dump, and that's the thing. Okay. All right. The the economy of Australia at that stage was very rough, and in 1808 we had a governor called、uh, William Bligh. 当时澳洲的经济处于非常困难的一个时刻。那么，一八零八年有一位总督称为 William Bligh， who was very famous. Most of you may have heard of the mutiny on the bounty. 呃，他当时呢是很有名的，可能你们也有听过这个 mutiny on the bounty. And he was the governor of New South Wales at that time. 他是当时西南威尔斯的总督。
And at that stage, the what became the currency for Australia was no longer the silver, the the holy dollar, but rum, the drink rum. 那么当时呢，澳洲的那个货币再不是刚才看到的 holy dollar， 而是 rum. Yeah, the uh, there was a rebellion. A type of rebellion, and the governor hid under his bed, as you can see in the picture. Uh, 当时呢，有一种的，好像啊，半边一样，就是你看到这个图里面呃看到的情况。And he was replaced by Lachlan Macquarie, who was the first governor that actually had managerial experience to get the economy and the colony to grow. 那么后来呢？原本的总督就被取替了，就后来呃有这位 Lachlan Macquarie 上任成为总督。那么他是有一种管理的能力和经验，就可以帮助呃澳洲的经济能够呃就是慢慢慢改善。And that was through pastoral leases, and then Australia started riding on the wool from the sheep, and that was known as riding on the sheep's back. 呃，当时呢，就是通过一些的农场的出租呢，能够让澳洲的经济能够恢复过来，所以当时就有有有人说，那个经济是好像骑在这个羊背上。So money started to flow into Australia from wool exports. 钱呢就开始流入澳洲，就是为了他们的羊毛的出口。Who? Sorry. Uh, the uh, early because of the lack of metal. There was a very little jewellery made, and the first known jeweller was Alexander Dick, an ex-convict. Uh, because at Alexander Dick, he was the And most of the items made were from recycled metal, melted down metal, and recycled into other things. 大部分做出来的呃呃珠宝呢，都是呃循环再造的，来自银的。Now the, in, the interesting thing on this, from what I have just told you, there's so little metal, yet this one、uh, pastoralist was so impressed that his dog. 当时呢，因为有这么少、这么稀有的金属，但是当时呢，其中一位他感到印象非常的深。那么他他有一只狗。Was able to catch foxes. Ah, 就能够呢，就是能够捉这个狐狸。He commissioned Alexander Dick to make a dog collar, a collar for the dog in silver. 他呢就就请那个 Alexander Dick 用银来制造一个呃呃领带给这只狗。And he had it engraved with the name of the dog and thanking the dog for catching all the foxes. 上面呢就刻了雕刻了这只狗的名字，而且呢要感谢它，就是呃捉了那些狐狸。You can imagine how expensive this collar was, considering how little metal there was. 你可以想象这个领带呢是这么昂贵，因为当时的金属真的很稀有。Uh, but normally made、uh, silver items for human beings, and you can see a tea set down the bottom that he made. 你这里呢，在下面的图看到有一些的茶具是用银制造的，也是真正为人类做的营造的呃一些呃物件。Mm. So it's everything that came in at that time was by the new settlers that were settling in Australia and was imported basically from England. 呃，所有这些东西呢，都是由一些新移民带到澳洲的，主要是来自英国的。Okay, <clears throat> nearly as I said, nearly all the old colonial、uh, items made was what we call hollowware. Uh, 差不多所有那些殖民地时代的这些物件呢，都是我们呃、uh, 称为 hollowware， 就是当中是空的那种的呃、uh, 物物件。Yeah, which is teapots, coffee pots, uh, vases, or anything of that type of.、Uh, Material for the table, for the dining table. 主要呢就是放在啊餐桌上的，比如茶壶、咖啡壶或者一些花瓶等等。They were all made of silver because at that stage there was no gold found in Australia. 全都是用银制的，因为当时在澳洲呢没有黄金。And the other thing that I, that they made was also trays and cutlery. Eating utensils. 另外呢也有一些餐具，还有一些啊盘子等等。
one thing which is quite distinctive for Australia, though, was to use emu eggs carved in cameo to be part of the ornamentation. 那么当时澳洲比较特色的东西呢，就是一种呃像鸡蛋这样呃形状的东西，上面有雕刻的呃用作装饰用途。嗯、hmm. ，Many of these emu eggs were carved with Aboriginal scenes or adorned with country scenes. 那么当时呢，上面这些鸡蛋呃装饰上面的呃雕刻的图呢，一般都是看到土著人的生活的情况或者当地一些风景等等。So here we have a couple of trophies. Trophies were also very popular made because、uh, horse racing was a very popular sport in Australia. Here you can see some medals. These are all very popular in the time. In the time, they were very popular in the time. In the time, they were very popular in the time. In the time, they were very popular in the time. In the time, they were very popular in the time. In the time, they were very popular in the time. And there you have a very interesting centerpiece with a crystal top and the、uh, ferns native to Australia, and you can see the Aborigines and the and the emu down there on the bottom. 然后呢，你看到这个呃，一般是放呃放在那个呃桌面上呃用来装饰的中央的摆放。那么上面有水晶的一个呃顶部，然后中间呢就是有一种呃特别在澳洲很常见的呃树木的木材。然后下面呢，你就看到土著啊呃这些呃动物的情况。Indigenous Australian motifs. You 看到一些的原住澳洲的图案。You have a kangaroo there in the left, and this is a Soviet ring. 左手边呢，你看到这个袋鼠，然后呢，这里你看到就是一个物件。And that's a fern leaf. This is an Australian fern leaf. 有这个树叶，澳洲特特别的那种呃树木的叶。And it was not. It was a time of not very political correctness. 当时呢，这个可能呢不是很政治上正确。And he have a, a charm of her Aboriginal head, which would be worn as a charm. 呃，这个是一个吊饰，是呃原住当时的土著的头部。Right. So the emu egg craze, as I said, the emu, which is like an ostrich, but the emu is only found in Australia. 那么我刚才提提到的这个鹅这种呃动物，它们的蛋呢，只是在澳洲才可以看到。Because it it has many layers, and like in helmet shell cameo work, you can carve down through the layers. 那么这种的蛋呢，因为它呢是有很多的很多层，然后呢，你可以在上面呢来去雕刻，就是用宝石来去进行雕刻。Mm -hmm. And the same tools, therefore. Uh, helmet shell cameo work was used for the、uh, for the emu eggs. 那么同时呢，同样的这些工具呢，也可以用来去雕刻那些的头盔等等。But unlike the Italian cameos, which had、uh, ladies' heads、uh, and other motifs of the classical period, the Australian material had rural scenes, Aboriginal motifs, and other quite unique Australian、uh, motifs. 那么跟意大利的那些图案很不同。如果你看澳洲雕刻出来的图案呢，一般都是呃澳洲农村乡郊那边的情景，还有呢，一般都是看到当地土著的环境。This is a very interesting picture because it, it could show you.、Uh, where's the pointer? Is that the pointer there? If you look here, this is the edge of the shell. 这里你可以看到呢，就是这个壳的边缘。This is the shell here. This is the inner layers. This is the inner layers. And there you see what Sydney heads. This you can see the head. This is a sailing ship. A sailing ship. Ah, you can see the sailing ship. An emu. Ah, a a kangaroo. A kangaroo. And a West Australian swan. Ah, the Aussie swan. So this is all the Australian motifs are carved on an emu egg. 这些呢，都是澳洲特色的图案雕在上面的。Now here you see a very interesting.、Uh, it's a lidded container, probably for the center of a dining table. 这个一般都是放在餐桌上的一个容器。Which would open up, and you would have sweet meats in there. 
打开来的话呢，里面呢就可以放了一些呃肉。Again, we have the, the silver ferns. 下面呢，你看可以看到用银呃造成的这些叶. And you can see the leaves coming down to the ball legs. 叶叶叶呢，这些树叶一直就是垂掉到呃下面这个腐呃这个底部. You've got the uh, uh, the the country scene engraved. Oh, sorry, carved onto the top of the egg. 在那个蛋的上面呢，也雕刻了当时那个呃香蕉的情况. And on top, the, what we call the finial is a kangaroo. 上面看到这个袋鼠. These two here are beautiful examples. 这里这两个是非常美的例子. And you can see on both these examples on the sides here, this is how they drain the egg. 在旁边呢，这个就是他们把蛋里面的东西抽出来方法。a uh, move in the, in the Australian jewellery industry came in the 1850s. In 1851, gold was discovered in Bathurst, New South Wales. In 1851, the very big discovery was in August 1851, when gold was discovered near Ballarat in Victoria. 那么一个更大的发现呢，是在一八五一年八月份，是在维多利亚，Ballarat那去发现呃黄金。This is just as the Californian gold rush was starting to wane.呃，当时呢，那个加州的黄金潮就是慢慢退退下的时候，呃，就出现这个发现。So all the the prospectors and gold diggers rushed to Melbourne, Australia. 那么所有人当时在追逐黄金热潮的人呢，就涌到那个跑到那个澳洲的墨尔本。Today Australia is the second largest producer of gold globally, 350 metric tons annually. 呃，现在呢，澳洲是全球第二大的黄金生产国，生产每年呢是三百五十公吨。And this is a picture of the largest gold nugget ever found. It's called the Welcome Stranger. 这个称为Word of Stranger 就是曾经发现最大块的黄金。And unlike today, where this would end up in a museum as a specimen, 今天如果发现这么一块的话呢, 肯定会放在那个博物馆作为一个展览。It was melted down to get the cash. 但是当时呢, 就把它融掉来取得现金。Okay, so it's very interesting what happened here in Australia. Even though Sydney was the original city of Australia. And Melbourne was established in 1837. Melbourne's population expanded to 500,000 people in 1861. 在一八六一年，墨尔本的人口爆发性的增加到五十万人。Compared to Sydney's population of sixty-one thousand at that time. 比较当时悉尼的人口只有六万一千。And today, just for clarification, Sydney is bigger than Melbourne now. 当然呢，今天悉尼是比墨尔本为大的。Yeah. With this came some very interesting consequences. Uh, the first of all was that a, pop, a domestic population was developed in Australia. And many jewelers who didn't make their fortune on the gold fields had to go back to their original trade. And that was most of them. And that was most of them. Uh, so with the discovery of gold in Australia, we now had the metal to make a, a jewellery industry flourish. And there were uh, and mo oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. most of the styles that the Australian jewellers made at that stage 
mirrored European styles. 当时澳洲珠宝商用的很多的风格呢，都是参照英国的潮流。Uh, but there was still what was called a cultural, a colonial cringe. 但仍然有一种的殖民地的影响或者色彩。And most of the people wanted the jewelry from England rather than locally made, believing it was better, better made jewelry. 大部分人呢都喜欢就是来自英国的珠宝，而不呃不太喜欢澳洲本土的，因为觉得英国的呢他们做的比较好。They wanted the jewelry from the mother country. 他们想要他们本身啊、uh, 本国的他们母国的那些的珠宝。So what you would see is a lot of jewelry with the lion's head for London, the anchor for Birmingham, the crown or the rosette for Sheffield, the uh, oh, that's Chester. No, it's not. Gone blank. Uh, is, is it Exeter? Uh, Exeter, sorry, and Ireland. 呃、uh, ，你看到这里不同的符号就代表呢英国不同的地方。比如第一个，这个呃，这这个头，这个狮子头呢，就代表伦敦。然后下面你看到呃皇冠呢，呃帽子啊，呃堡垒等等呢，就代表比如啊伯明翰，呃 Chelsea 等等这些不同的地方。The first three are the more common ones. 头三个是最常见的。Uh, but in Australia, we do not have a regulated system of hallmarks. 呃、uh, ，在澳洲，澳洲我们没有一个规管的一种标志的系统。Not like in England where they have to go to a red a saying office. 不像在英国呢，他们一定要到某一个办公室办事处去，呃，去进行这个手续。So a pseudo system of stamps was is used or was used. 所以后来呢，就有这样的一个像呃比较可以说是虚假的系统的那个盖印出现了。One of the reasons for that is Because it's believed that Australians do not like authority. Because at that time, they believed that Australians do not like authority. Yeah. So even today, there is no official SA office or legislated hallmark system in Australia. So even today, there is no official SA office or legislated hallmark system in Australia. So even today, there is no official SA office or legislated hallmark system in Australia. So even today, there is no official SA office or legislated hallmark system in Australia. So even today, there is no official SA office or legislated So, 呃，后来呢，就有一些的尝试，尝试把一些盖印放在珠宝呃作品上。And the reason why I'm explaining the stamp system. 为什么我要解释这套的盖印系统呢 ？So that you can identify Australian jewelry from English jewelry. 因为这样你就可以分辨澳洲的珠宝，珠宝跟英国的珠宝。The first attempt at this sort of thing was in Victoria in 1889. 第一次这样的尝试呢，就是在维多利亚，一八八九年。And it was by the Victorian Manufacturing Jewelers Association. 是维多利亚的珠宝商生产协会。So you would have the members stamp. 有这个成员的印。And it was based on the Advanced Australia coat of arms. 呃，这里呢是根据澳洲这个呃特别的守则。Which is different to the official Australian coat of arms. Ah, is 跟呃官方的是官方的版本是不同的 And the reason I've laid them out is so you can see the hanging sheep, the sailing ship. 你可以看到这个呃锤呃旋锤的这只羊，还有这个帆船 Yeah, the pick and shovel. 呃，这里你可以看到这些的呃耙等等的工具 And a wrapped up sheath of wheat. 呃，还有就是呃小麦 And that was for 15 carat gold. 十五呃十五十五 k 金。18 carat. 十八 k. 12 carat. 十二 k. Very rarely used. 很少用的。And 9 carat, which is very common. 九 k 的是很常见。So this is a list of some of the more famous Australian jewelers that you will could come across. 这些是比较有名的澳洲珠宝商。One that you'll see a lot in the literature is Ernest Livney. 你经常在文献里面看到的就是 Ernest Livney. But he uh, and he's even today there's a silver competition named after him in Australia. 啊，到了今天仍然在澳洲有一个银的比赛呢，是用他的名字来命名的。Then you have Joachim Wind. 然后呢，就是有 Joachim Wind. Who just signed his name Wind. 他的名字只是 Wind. Lamborn and Wagner. Lamborn and Wagner. L and W. L and W. 
Henry Steiner. Henry Steiner. H. Steiner. H. Steiner. Then a lot of jewelry you come to now, which is more mass produced. 后来呢，就有大量生产的珠宝。Is Willis and Co. or T. Willis and Co. T. Willis and Co. Which is a unicorn. 就是奇轮 unicorn. And the W. 和 W. Doug and Shapir. Doug and Shapir. Which is an anchor. 这个毛。But do not mix that up with the Birmingham anchor. It has got nothing to do with Birmingham. 但是呢，跟伯明翰的那个完全没有关系，不要混淆。You will usually see it in those three stamps that I just showed you before from the from the manufacturers. 你一般会看到我刚才给你们看的三个盖印，来自生产商。Uh, Aronson and Co. with a flag. Aronson and Co. 有一支旗。And Larad Brothers with the star over the bar, heraldic bar. The Larad Brothers 呢，就是在呃一个横杆上面有一一个星星。Yeah, but there are many Australian makers. I'm just listing those that I see very often in my business. 其实还有很多澳洲的珠宝商，我只是在我业务里面最常见的，我就列了出来。Okay, so we now move to the Art Nouveau period when the metal is more prolific in Australia. 好了，这里呢，你看到就是下一个阶段是 Art Nouveau 的这个期间，是呃，澳洲方面呢是呃挺有名的。And one thing that I noticed when I put this talk together, 当我准备这一个演说的时候呢 ，was that most of the literature that I looked at, 我看的大部分文献 ，there was a lack of large diamond jewelry. Most of the jewelry that was made was for uh, up and coming uh, middle class. 大部分做出来的珠宝都是为了冒出来的中产阶层。I think it's fair to say that the upper class has still brought their jewelry in from overseas. 呃，因为大部分上流社会的人，他们都是从海外把珠宝带进来。But having said that, there were Boutique jewelers that did make some very fine pieces. 但仍然有一些精品的珠宝店呢，能够做到非常精致的珠宝。This cufflinks on the left is very interesting because it's in chinoiserie style. 呃，这个你看到呢，就是一个袖呃那个呃袖口的钮是非常的美丽的。And here you can see the typical uh, movement of a, a at nouveau the the flows the delicate lines. And here, the large and smaller, with the little squiggle. Very interesting. How on Art Nouveau period. Uh, 中间的上图和下图呢，你都可以看到很典型的 Art Nouveau 呃期待的那些的珠宝作品。而且上面你看到线条都是比较流线型的。And natural seed pearls were used a lot in Australian pieces. 那么我们在澳洲呢，也用很多就是天然的珍珠。So this is the grape and vine, which is really defining the Australian style. And here we have this very fine gold workmanship. Uh, 这里你看到就是 grape and vine 时代的作品呢，都是挺挺能够代表澳洲的这种工艺。呃，下面这个你看到挺多的黄金被使用了，也是有非常精巧的手工。And this is where Lambon and Wagner made a lot of these sort of jewelry. Lambon and Wagner 呢就做很多这类的首饰。And it's called grape and vine because the little leaves were beaten out, and you also get little vine droplets coming off it. 你看到呢？为什么称为 grape and vine 呢？就是你上面你看到很多这些的呃葡萄啊、叶子啊，或者一一滴一颗一颗小呃小滴形的东西。In even five years ago, to repair a piece like this was almost impossible. Five years ago, 呢，如果要呃修复这样的一个作品呢，根本差不多是不可能的。But today, with laser welding, it is possible to repair these things. 今天呢，因为有镭射的焊接，能够呢就呃修补这些的作品了。嗯、mm. ，So it makes you wonder how, what skills they needed when they originally made these pieces. 所以呢，你就可以想象，原本做出来的时候呢，他们的技巧是多么多、多么大。Here's some other examples. The this here is a lid that opens up. 
呃，这里你看到另外一个例子，上面呢是一个盖可以打开来的。Set with a garnet。然后上面呢有一个呃石榴石榴石。And you can just see underneath where the hair locket section is。呃，这里呢就是有一块好像锁的一个一个部件。Again here you can see some beautiful、uh, leaf work and dropping into the the flower here. 这里呢，你看到像呃树叶这样子的形状，而且呢连连接到呃花朵这样的精巧的手工。Now gold nugget because the, it was such a, a important part of the Australian culture was to get your know, gold from the gold press, sorry, from the gold prospectors is to get your find your nuggets. So gold nugget jewelry was very.、Uh, Prolific in the early days of Australia. Um, gold is very important for Australia. So, when you see that these jewels are part of the culture of the Australian jewelry industry, and what they would do is melt down the gold nugget and make the piece. They put these jewels in the gold nugget and make the piece. But you can see they kept little bits of the gold nugget to actually apply to the brooch. 他们这些的黄金粒子呢，有时候保存下来呢，就可以呢放在胸针上面。And you can see some of these were elaborate. 你可以看到有一些有有一部分它的设计是挺繁琐的。And some of them were quite simple. 但有一些呢就很简约。These two here are very famous examples,、uh, and they are very brought very big money when they came to auction. 呃、uh, ，这里呢，两个非常突出的例子，当他们出现在拍卖场的时候呢，能够呢，就是啊， uh, 赢了很多的钱。In relative terms,、uh, I would say that these brooches were probably as valuable as a pink Eiffel Tower. 呃、uh, ，如果呢，看看这些胸针呢，它们的价值呢，可能呢，跟 Picasso 塔一样大。Okay, so. In 1901, the six colonies of Australia became one nation called the Commonwealth of Australia. 那么，在一九零一年呢，六个殖民地呢就呃成为一个单一的一个呃国家，称称为那个澳洲联邦。And as one of the few countries in the world, oh really? One minute? Oh, I better move quickly. Sorry. What? <laughs> what?、Uh, uh, what? A few countries born without revolution. 是呃，少数的国家当中，其中是一个是可以呢建立出来而没有经过革命的。All right, I'm going to run really quickly now. 啊，我要讲快一点了。Well, we, there was some during First World War. We had the uh, uh, regimental jewelry for Gallipoli. 呃，第一次大战时候的一些的呃珠宝作品。Here are some more examples of Australian jewelry. 这些是另外一些澳洲珠宝的例子。And、uh, then we go into the Edwardian era, which is a very prolific era. 爱德华，爱德华年代也是非常繁盛的一个年代。And、uh, I'll quickly glance over this. I was going to talk about opal jewelry being Australia. 原本呢，我想说那个蛋白石的珠宝啊、uh, ，是很能够代表澳洲的。So here we go a bit to the Art Deco, which is the end of what I was speaking about, where opal was used quite a bit. 装饰装饰风格艺术的年代呢，用很多蛋白石。And platinum also came into Australian. Here's a couple of examples of Australian jewelry in the platinum era. 然后呢，就到了这个铂金的时代。这些例子看到呢，都用了很多铂金。And as you can see, the workmanship is very good by this stage, as they followed European trends again. 啊，他们呢，又再一次呢，去跟随欧洲的一些潮流趋势。Okay, just quickly, if you want to learn more, this is probably the Bible of Australian jewelry. 如果你想多了解的话呢，这本可以说是澳洲珠宝的圣经。This is the Bible on Australian silver by Hawkins. 这个是 Hawkins 的向澳洲的关于银方面的圣经。And、uh, if you go into later Australian jewelry, these ma this book by Christine Errett is excellent. 呃、uh, ，也可以参考这本 Christine Errett 的书，是可以了解澳洲比较后年代的呃、uh, 首饰。Yeah, so I just want to give the acknowledgements here to Clapness of Melbourne. 啊、uh, ，这个是名谢 Clapness 啊、uh, ，墨尔本的。To Kosminski Galleries. 
Kosminski Gallery, Melbourne. The Gemological Association of Australia. Uh, 澳洲的这个珠宝协会, and various internet websites. Uh, and finally, to Mr. Mock, and happy birthday! 最后呢, 感谢莫先生, Thank you, Mr. Bauer, for your informative presentation. Here comes the question and answer section. 现在是问答环节，但是由于时间关系，我们先欢迎一个提问。We we'll welcome one question as time limit. Lucky me, I don't get. <laughs> I've said it all. Great. Like 请问有没有提问? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So, among uh, according to your experience, uh, what sort of uh, the most expensive antique jewelry that you ever seen in Australia? Uh, you uh, give us the, the value of it. 你在澳洲根据你的经验，你看过最昂贵的古董珠宝呢？是什么呢？它的价钱是多少呢？嗯，This mm, comes down to the old adage, rarity and desirability. So it comes down to probably a trophy that I saw. It was a racing trophy uh, out of gold. And it was it was not a Melbourne Cup, ironically. It actually was a centenary cycling trophy. It, I can't quite remember how many kilos of gold were in it. Uh, but it was very rare. It was run, won by uh, 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 Hopperman, which is a very famous Australian cyclist, and it, it, and it was very sought after and could never be reproduced. So these factors comes into it, and uh, I, I can't even tell you the maker was. It was just that that was a, such a one-off, and occasionally it comes to they tell people that's such a rare piece, how much insurance do you want to pay? Because whatever you value it at becomes a the basis for insurance. And there are a few of those, yeah. Um, 以我知道呢, 一般来讲, 一个古董珠宝的价值呢, 就是忽悠多少人, 渴望得到它, 还有它的稀有的程度, 那么我的印象呢, 就是一个奖杯, 呃, 这个奖杯是一个比赛项目的一个奖杯, 里面呢是用了黄金, 但是这个不是墨尔本杯的奖杯, 是一个自行车, 就是单车的一个赛事的奖杯, 是非常的稀有的, 是有一位称为Hubman这个人, 是澳洲很有名的自行车手 他赢得了这个奖杯, 那么, 呃, 这个奖杯后来呢, 根本也没有办法去复制, 是一次性的, 那你会问, 呃, 人们愿意付多少的保险, 保费去, 去, 呃, 去, 保护这个奖杯呢, 呃, 这个, 这些因素呢, 也影响了它的价值。